Welcome to the Evo India podcast. Now, on the first part of this Dakar podcast, we talk to Hero Motorsports' riders, Ross Branch, Sebastian Buller, and Franco Kaimi. And on this part, the second, we are talking to the guys behind the team. We've got Wolfgang Fischer, Wafi as he is known out here. He is the team manager for Hero Motorsports and he's been involved with the team right from day one. The very first start of Hero's Dakar journey, Wafi was involved. So on this podcast, we're going to talk about the evolution of the team, how the team has developed both in terms of the technical side with the bikes, with the riders, with the growth, with the number of riders that they have been inducted into the team. And also later on, we're going to talk to Rohit Isaac, marketing and communications head for Hero Motorsports on the plans for Hero Motorsport for Indian Motorsport and also how this whole rally to road program is developing. Bafi, thank you for being on the Evo India podcast. Well, just in time for you, <laughs> the bikes have been shut off. So as you can see behind me, now the team is actually dismantling the whole setup. Uh, tomorrow, they're going to leave at what? Three in the morning? Four in the morning? Five. At five in the morning, they're going to head out into the empty quarter for the second part of the Dakar. This is actually the rest day, so the day when the bikes have been completely stripped, redone, the riders have had time to rest, relax, and then another week of madness in the desert. So, Wafi, welcome to the Evo India podcast. Talk us through the entire journey of Hero Motorsport in the Dakar. Yeah, hi Sirish, uh, welcome at the Dakar. Really great that you made it here to the rest day. Uh, yeah. The whole journey, as you said, uh, is a couple of years old now. We are in the seventh year of Hero Motorsports in rally business. And uh, yeah, we started in uh, April 2016 with the, the whole project. And uh, was growing step by step, uh, evolutionizing the team, the bike, the results. Uh, so the rally sport is, is all about endurance and also to, to get to the point that you're really competitive is a it's a long-term project. It doesn't come overnight. You cannot buy any results. You cannot mm -hmm. buy any experience. You just need to go through and make your job and learn and get up to be competitive over a couple of years. You started off with your existing bike. Uh, Y'all were part of Speedbrain and then that got taken over by Hero Motorsports and now this entire operation is a Hero factory effort. The bike behind me, it was first showcased in 2021, an all-new motorcycle. Talk to me about how that development went of the motorcycle. What was the concept behind the engine, behind the chassis? Yeah, we had a lot of inputs from our uh, rally experience before. So we knew what we have, we knew what the competition is, is doing. And we, we tried to figure out the, the best compromise of robustness, performance, durability and uh, good uh, balance of, of weight to give the rider a tool where he can be competitive but also riding as safe as possible to save energy and power so considering all that we had with a with a new rule also which came in a couple of years ago the possibility to develop a full prototype mm -hmm. which gave, gave us the, the, yeah, the full freedom to do what we want and um, having that we could develop a engine from scratch, we could make a chassis uh, out of what we knew before, evolutionizing the, the concept and yeah, I think we have a really good product now to go racing as we saw the last one and a half years especially. Yeah, so yesterday, stage 8 of the Dakar, the bike, your own bike, Ross Branch riding, it set the fastest time at the stage. So clearly the speed is there. How long before we see your bike being consistently on the top rankings of the stages and also maybe get to a Dakar podium? It's about since one and a half years since the bike is like race proven, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, where we could regularly win stages in the World Championship races, make podiums and uh, also with uh, last year uh, with Cheryl's first uh, stage win at Dakar yeah. as a real first for Hero and for, for the team working with this project. So seeing that, we understood clearly we had the speed, we had the, the right tool. Uh, we had also the, the rider, J-Rod, who was uh, really a, a, a crucial element of developing the bike, because he's very analytic, gives very good feedback to the engineers and the technicians and mechanics 
about the bike behavior, so that mm -hmm. helps a lot. It's mm -hmm. necessary to, to make the right steps in the right direction. And then when you have a bike uh, where other riders also understand this bike is, is competitive, mm -hmm. then you also get interested, uh, or you, they get interested to join the team. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having that, we, we could then uh, have uh, Franco joining the team, make the team stronger, and eventually then also Ross Branch mm -hmm. uh, joining us in spring this year, being yeah. with us since the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge of uh, last year's springtime. Yeah, so coming back to my question though, by or how long will it take for Hero now to consistently fight for the podium positions? Yeah, as I said, we are, we are there already. Yeah. You cannot be fighting for podium positions uh, if you're not winning already mm -hmm. something. And as I said, in almost every race we won stages mm -hmm. and uh, it needs to just come all together. Okay. So we made the podium it's a matter of So it's a, it's a matter so of time. Yeah, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of coming everything together. Yeah. yeah. What's the environment like? The Hero Motorsports team. What's the environment like? Where is the setup based? How do you identify riders? How do you identify your technical personnel? The team base is in, in Germany uh, since 2019. Uh, the foundation of Hero Tech Center Germany is, is one point uh, a development base for products for Hero and also a place to develop the Hero Motorsports rally bike mm -hmm. and, and the base of the team, the logistic base. Mm. The team personnel, uh, how do you identify those? How do you go about recruiting your riders? Like I said, when, the, when you have a, a fast bike, mm -hmm. you can attract riders. If you don't have a fast bike, you can only go shopping. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to be ready for fast riders, then you get fast riders. And of course, the more riders you, you can choose from, the, the better it is. And yeah. uh, in this case, we are really happy with what we have on board. Yeah. Uh, you are taking on the likes of the factory Hondas, the factory KTMs and the Husqvarna, Gas Gas, also Sherco. Yamaha is not there in the Dakar from this year. How difficult is it to compete with those big name global brands who've got a lot of history and heritage in Dakar and in motorsport in general? It is super difficult. This rally is one of the most complex motorsports at all. You know, you have only the, the Dakar rally as the main event in the year. Mm. Over two weeks, this is one of the other sports, other categories they are distributing all over the season. Yeah. They do the race, they fail or they win, they yeah. go back home, they fix it, they learn, change and go back. Here you have everything in, in one rush and when you're ready, you make it through. If you have any weak point, you, you fail. <laughs> so, and if you fail one day, it spoils the result for the whole yeah. Old Dakar Rally because yeah. it's, it's not collecting points, it's, yeah. it's always the total time which is counting. Yeah. Uh, you must have seen lots of highs and lows in rallying, uh, especially with the whole Hero project. What's the one thing that has given you the most pride in the past six years, seven years of competing in the Dakar with Hero? Well, I think the main highlight was, was last year the first stage win at the Dakar itself. Mm -hmm. So, this is for sure one of the these biggest milestones so far. Yeah. You also work closely with the Technical Center in India and CIT in Jaipur. Uh, how much development of the bike is being done out of India? The main uh, hub for race technology is Europe, clearly. Yeah. So for that it was really important to have the base at the Hero Tech Center Germany, mm -hmm. as also many special parts are available around yeah. Germany, around Central of Europe. So this is important to have that base. Of course, we are in very close cooperation with our counterparts at the CIT. Mm. Of course, there's a learning from each other. There's a big uh, styling department also yeah. there at the CIT, for example, who could take a good part of the new bike yeah. styling development. Yeah. Uh, the, the more functional part we do directly in Europe, as we are here with the, with the team, with our logistics, with the riders. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice distribution of, yeah, of all the duties what we have to fulfill. Yeah. This motorcycle that you've developed, uh, is there a possibility that there will be a road replica version? Uh, like it is now, as a prototype for, for Dakar Rally, it is difficult. Because you cannot break it down easily in a production model. 
but as you see, deriving from uh, like a racing uh, approach with the uh, X-Pulse 200, that was already a, from the first day on when we started the rally project, the target to have something like a, like a multi-purpose off-road bike, mm -hmm. easy to handle, easy to ride, also affordable, yeah. and uh, creating a new class in its own basically, and that's, we are really happy to achieve that not only going to the race but also bringing something back to the customers to our our fans and uh, bring the off-road scene forward in India. Uh, how closely involved were you in the development of the X-Pulse 200 and also the rally version of it? The X-Pulse 200 basically was was designed as the first project of the Hero Tech Center Germany mm -hmm. so that was in parallel with the race team uh, mm. the first project that mm -hmm. was really good. So there's a lot of motorsport learning that you guys have got that has gone into the motorcycle that we actually can ride on the road. Yeah, you can say that. And Especially also, you know, to, to understand that this is a, a segment of the market which is also interesting, yeah. which is not, not very big uh, uh, still uh, in India. Yes. Going into the opera segment, in the sports segment, in the, in the adventure, mm -hmm. have really agile, light and uh, bikes which gives you a fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're actually very proud of what the X-Pulse 200 has done and now we're seeing it more and more in rallying in India. Um, do you see a lot of potential for the motorcycle? I see how it is accepted and how it is getting popular and how, how big percentages of riders are using it yeah. at the races all over. Not only in rally, you see it in the, in the motocross scene, in the enduro races. Oh, it's nice, really yeah. aspiring. So we are here at the Dakar, so I want to come back to that. Over the years, we've seen the Dakar getting tougher and tougher. Uh, right now, it's what? Not even 4 o'clock in the evening, the sun is almost gone, it's cold, you had heavy torrential downpour in the desert of all places. So the conditions are becoming tougher. Uh, what, what is your reading on this? How have you seen the Dakar progress over the years? The Dakar was always hard. Mm. There's nothing what you can say, this was now an easy Dakar. There has been maybe a, a year like the last Dakar in South America, which was quite short with only 10 stages, uh, which was not so intense in length, but has its own intensity and having heavy sand dunes and di different track conditions than here. But it's, it's always challenging. You always find some new condition, you know, this year two, two stages more in the new terrain yeah. in this so-called empty quarter and in the basically close to the Emirates in this corner of Saudi Arabia. So we will see. It's just coming the next few days. We will see how it treats us. And uh, with the cold and the rain, this is always something. Yeah, you can you can face. Mm. We had it in South America. We had 5,000 meter high Andean passes yeah. with snow and ice, and then going back down to the lowlands in Argentina with 50 degrees temperatures and so it's a big compromise you need to be prepared for everything yeah. uh, why do you keep coming back to the Dakar what brings you to the Dakar it's probably the, the desert virus mm -hmm. you started it one time and uh, get this yeah this, this intense feeling of, of freedom of adventure of this wide lands of riding in the like in unmarked terrain, this mm -hmm. is something really special. And the riders, the first thing after a crash or injury is just, I, I want to be on the bike as fast as possible to go mm -hmm. back to the desert. So mm -hmm. is, yeah, it's, it's very intense, the feeling to, you want to have it. When you smell it once and when you experience it once, you want to have it again. And what brings Hero over and over again back to the Dakar? It's a it's a project which is fitting, I think, very good to the to the hero program. You know, it's at the beginning we always had been a bit joking like it's the longest commute what you can imagine. Coming from a commuter, you need to have also reliability. You have also your conditions to arrive at the point, and uh, it's different. Like closed circuit racing is a different style. Yeah, I think this is just fitting well to the philosophy of the company. And what is the long-term goal? What is the vision for the team? Winning the Dakar, clearly. That's mm. where we're all here. That's mm. where we're working all, all year hard to, to get up to 
to the point where, where we can be there. And, uh, and yeah, realistically, when closer. realistically when will that happen? Realistically, you cannot say. It's just a, when you when you're there, then you will experience it. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you some examples like uh, HRC Honda with a really back racing background. Um, mm -hmm. it, it took them eight years to win Dakar when they started the project. Mm -hmm. KTM in the years back before they won, it took them I think more than ten years. Mm -hmm. Like I said before at the beginning, it's a it's a long term project. You cannot learn all in one year. You cannot have it ready because there is no simulation. You cannot simulate the Dakar during the year. You can mm -hmm. do. World Championship races and five days races, you find out something, but in the reality you only find out at this one race at the year. This yeah. is and you have one problem and that is it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, so that's this year you had the issue of running out of fuel and that was also because some of the regulation changes that were enforced upon the teams. So uh, how do you deal with all of those? <laughs> the disappointments? Yeah, you have to get over it and get back and try again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, You're just just to because you asked before with the riders, the competition is, is much different than like it was like ten years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, now we have like twenty riders, like twenty seven riders in the rally GP class. Out of them maybe twenty guys who are able to to go in the top five mm -hmm. or on the top, on the podium. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe ten guys who are good to be the, the, the winner, the overall winner of the Dakar. So you see how big the competition is and how intense. There is no no more big tactics. They're every day flat out. Mm -hmm. and the smallest mistake, taking a lot of risk, yeah. the smallest mistake, yeah, you destroy your material or you crash or you get lost. There's a lot of options to fail. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, the team behind us, so they are dismantling the setup over here and Tomorrow you all will move to a new bivac. You have a total of 12 members in the team plus four riders. Right. It's a very tight and close-knit team. Uh, is this enough uh, or you just are optimized for what you're aiming to achieve? Yeah, we are optimized what we're aiming, what we're aiming for. Uh, we have the advantage that we have uh, most of, or many of the team members several years with us. Some mm. guys, 10 plus, even coming with me through other projects before, mm -hmm. and uh, that helps a lot. So every every hand knows what to do, and uh, there's always the question of how big the team is. I prefer to have it as compact as possible. Mm -hmm. so every additional team member, you need more logistics, you need more watch out, and everyone should be knowing what he's doing, and then it's enough. Yeah. In terms of development of the motorcycle, as we've seen, your bike is as fast as the other factory motorcycles. What's next in terms of the evolution of the bike? Or is it just detail improvements? It's at this level now where, where the top teams are, it's, it's detail improvement. Mm -hmm. You cannot make huge steps anymore. Mm. So you always work on, on the fine tuning of the suspension, of the handling of the bike, some engine performance things. Not so much on the, on the top performance, but also on the how the how the bike is reacting in certain conditions, you know, how you can have the best compromise of your torque and power. You know, them small steps, but important steps. Yeah, and this is what you're doing in the Dakar and also in the International Series. So you're going to take part in the World Championship also in 2023. As for Indian motorsport, uh, do you have a vision for that? Yeah, for Indian motorsport, I think there's a lot, lot potential to develop. There's a lot of growth potential yeah. for all the, the enthusiasts there and uh, we are really happy with, with Hero to give them a, a tool to fulfill their dreams to go to go riding to go experience off the off the track and uh, go also racing for some of the guys all right thank you Wafi so we'll now talk to Rohit uh, Rohit Isaac is the marketing and communications uh, head for Hero Motorsport and also is working a lot on the projects in India. Wish you all the best, Wafi, for the remainder of the Dakar. Congratulations on the stage time yesterday and look forward to some more good stuff from you, from the team and looking at you all eventually coming up there at the top step of the Dakar podium. We are yep. all rooting for you. That's why we are here. Thank you. Thanks, Sirish. Th thanks, 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 Wafi. Nice talk. Thank you. Yeah, see you soon. See you.
So, Rohit, uh, what's the plan for Hero Motorsports in India? Well, I think we've, we started uh, national racing in 2019. We have big plans for the immediate future and the upcoming future as well. We started off with two riders in 2019 and as of 2022, we've got five riders now. Uh, we're very happy with the expulse. I think we have a winning bike there in terms of our racing plans for the future mm -hmm. as well as our you know, future products that are in the anvil as well. Okay, a lot of what happens over here in the motorsport team also translates into development of the expulse, which will eventually come on the road? Yes, so a lot of the learnings that we take back from our, our 450s here and from the race team here is used to develop our products back home for racing as well. Uh, you know, whether it's race operations, whether it's uh, systems and process that we run from a racing standpoint in national racing, everything is largely evolved from the international team that we take back from here. Uh, even in terms of the bikes that we develop back home, the international team, the national riders also give us valuable inputs in terms of developing the bike back home. So a large amount of the inputs that go into the development of the race bikes back home comes largely from the national team as well. Mm. So it's basically the same same racing pedigree and the same racing DNA that you see in the 450s that you see here is what comes into our race expulses back home as well. Uh, going forward, Hero is going to take part in more national championships. What all is on the anvil? So for the upcoming season, basically what we focus on are the, are the championships, which is primarily the INRC and the Sprint Championships, as well as the cross-country races that we have. So, the uh, Dakshin there, the Desert Storm, to name a few. Uh, 2023, we're hoping to see about 14 to 15 rounds of the championships, as well as about five to seven cross-country races this year. Mm. And that's largely what we've planned right now from a rally yeah. format. And you also have a development program to identify, nurture, train, and get talent who can eventually get out here into absolutely, the record. Absolutely. So we've always been uh, you know, on, the, on the lookout for fresh talent in India. And India is a, a huge melting pot from a motorsport standpoint. There's, there's amazing raw talent that you see across the country, whether it's down south, whether it's in the east, everywhere. I mean, there's a lot of untapped raw talent that we see in India and in terms of huge motorsport potential. So we're always in the lookout for fresh talent. And as you can see, you know, when we started off in 2019, we started with two riders. Mm -hmm. As of 2022, we've now scaled up to five riders. We've got two new boys and Tanika, uh, who's joined us as the first female rider of the team. So we're always on the lookout for fresh talent. And whenever we have our international team members uh, down in the country, uh, you know, they play a very valuable role in helping us scout good talent, you know, where they see potential of scaling them to the next level. Mm -hmm. So it's not about only hire, uh, hiring talent uh, and grooming them for the, Indian, in, for the Indian races. We also see promise, in, we also look at riders from a future promise of taking them to the international formats as well. So that's, that's the natural progression that we have in mind for all our national riders as well. Okay. How long before we can get an Indian rider in the hero team? Once again. <laughs> Well, we've, like I said, we've, we've, we're always on the on a constant lookout for fresh talent, and we've, we've we've definitely seen a few people who you know are a good fit. Uh, unfortunately, the the level of performance and skill that you see in India and what you see on international standpoint, uh, in terms of training and opportunities, it's a little less. But that's where we hope to bridge the gap. You know, we're trying to you know find that kind of talent and groom them with the best that, to, that the global motorsport community has to offer with our team because you know we have a huge set of people here who, who, who are the best in the business mm -hmm. whether it's our riders whether it's our, our team like you've spoken to Wafi and the rest of the team that you see here these guys are the best at what they do and these are the guys who are going to be grooming the new talent that we find so I think it's just a matter of time before we find somebody again. All right Rohit thank you for thank being you so on the podcast and wish you and the team all the best Absolutely. look forward to seeing more stuff in india thank and you. maybe having these bikes over in india absolutely. either for an event or maybe even for a rally absolutely thanks Sirish. I look forward to seeing you. thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions for the hero motorsport team or even questions on the dakar drop it in the comments and we'll get our team as well as the hero team to answer that and get back to you with all the right and relevant questions so Thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this podcast, do share it with other motorsport enthusiasts. Let more people learn about Hero's plans and also their journey where they've gotten to over the past seven years. And also, if you enjoy watching this, hit the bell icon to say subscribe to the Evo India channel because we will have a more series of these motorsport podcasts on the Evo India show. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.